Hello, welcome back to Too Many Handhelds. Uh, every once in a while I like to do one of these where we just talk and uh, just, you know, chit-chat about where things are, what's going on in the gaming space, and, uh, you know, the channel too. So, personally, I'm actually in kind of an interesting place where I've finally kind of completed my 3DS collection. And I say kind of because you never really complete a collection like that. But at this point, I have all of the ones that I wanted. Um, which, again, isn't to say I'll never buy another one, but it's very, very unlikely that I'll buy another one. Um, the only ones that are left that I don't have, I'm either indifferent about. There might be colors, like uh, I don't have um, like a regular red one or purple one, but like I also don't really, I'm not like clamoring to get those or anything. Like I really don't care if I ever have one or not. Or um, they're just really overpriced to the point where I just don't care enough to spend that much money on them. So at this point, I think I'm pretty happy with my collection. Um, long term, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Um, I've started replacing the batteries on the oldest uh, regular DSs, and then eventually I'll be doing that with the 3DSs too, so that'll be fun, <laughs> just to go through each one and replace the battery. But, uh, you know, general PSA, your original DS batteries are getting old, so consider changing them if you can. Um, you know, they're, they're not bulging like the PSP ones, but, uh, you know, at the same time, they are pretty old batteries, so just keep that in mind. And let's talk about Soldier Boy real quick. I don't want to talk a lot about Soldier Boy because I'm sick of talking about Soldier Boy. <laughs> this is supposed to be a handheld channel, but he keeps doing handheld things, so here we are. Um, so last week was very weird. <laughs> um, last week we had one day where several YouTubers, uh, all at the same time, had a review of the TRDR, or the Soldier Boy handheld, because there's, there's one Soldier Boy version of the TRDR, the rest are just called the TRDR. And none of them were favorable. Um, the two of them, they were just showing how, one, it comes with no games, and two, it's very difficult to use, and it's just kind of awkward. And for $300, you just want something that works better than what they sent. Those are, like, the main takeaways. And it was very weird, because at the same time, um, on that day, Soldier Boy retweeted one of them on Twitter saying, uh, you bought that, we didn't send that to you. And... What's weird is it worked and it distracted people where anytime they said anything on Twitter, a bunch of people in the comments are like, oh, they didn't send that to you. You bought that. Who cares? Honestly, it, it, first off, I do 100% believe they were given those handhelds because generally speaking, when a whole bunch of people drop a review at the same time, that's a sign that a review embargo was lifted and they were all given the green light to upload a review. They probably had it for a long time, which a lot of them, a few of them actually confirmed the next day they have had them for a long time before then. But who cares where it came from? Like, the takeaway is, it's a really terrible handheld. And regardless of whether they were given them or they were purchased, which, again, I, I still don't think they were purchased, but whatever, it still doesn't change the fact that it's another awful handheld and it's going to be a failure. Like, people might buy it just for the branding, but as a handheld to play, it's something that basically looks like the original Retroid, but the only difference is that it runs Android and there's a touchscreen. Well, actually, the first Retroid is Android-based, but it's dot vanilla Android. It, it's a weird thing, I don't know. It's, it's more of like a vanilla Android experience with a touchscreen that doesn't work very well. That's essentially it, and it has a, a stronger processor. But otherwise, it's very, 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 very similar to the Retroid version one, which some people have gone so far as even to say it's the same thing. It's not exactly the same thing, but it's close enough that I could see why they get confused. So that's just a mess. And then days before that was even weirder, where you know, Soldier Boy came out with this video about how, like, he's he owns Atari now, and he sold Soldier Game for 140 million. And then the next day, Atari came out and said, "No, nah, our CEO hasn't changed." Just to kind of clear that up, and he threw a hissy fit like a child. He got really upset, and he was just online like cussing out Atari and just huffing and puffing and being all angry. And it's just, it's basically like, you know, if you ever see a kid in a store and they ask their parent for a toy, and the parent tells them no, and they just lose their mind and have a meltdown. It was like that, only it was weird because it's a grown adult doing that. And he's like, I have the contract from Atari right here, and he put it on screen, which, from a legal standpoint, I gotta feel like that's kind of weird. Like, maybe you shouldn't be sharing your legal contracts, whatever. But the takeaway with that is that if you look at it, I mean, it's screen capped, it's on YouTube, a lot of people have shared it, you could see it now, it's public, because he made it public. The contract says he's getting millions of Atari TOKN, Atari token which is Atari's cryptocurrency. <laughs> so I don't know what the deal was with Atari or what kind of deal they made, but he wasn't getting millions of dollars from that. It looked like it's all about the cryptocurrency, which isn't really valued that high. I mean, I, it's just so bizarre. Uh, that whole situation is just very weird. 
and uh, I will not be getting a TRDR for review. Um, I'm not a big enough YouTuber to get one sent to me, and even if I was, it's just not a device I'm interested in. I'm, I'm definitely not paying $300 out of pocket for one, because that's just not that good of a device, and also because I have better Android handhelds. So that's where that's at. Uh, you know, it's just a weird situation all around. Um, let's talk a little bit about handhelds and where they're going. And talking about like the, the Ann Burnick, uh, Pow Kitty kinds of uh, handhelds from China. Um, we're at kind of the end of one generation and we're not quite in the next one yet. So we're in this kind of weird spot and we keep getting the same handhelds, the same chipsets, and all they do is change the form factor. And that's kind of interesting in a way, like to see new handhelds with like a new form factor. Like, you know, I'd love to see one that's like the, uh, SN30, only instead of it being a Super Nintendo controller, it's like a Genesis controller with six buttons. I just want a simple handheld with six face buttons. Is that really so hard? But like, that's it. We're just at the point where they're all kind of the same in terms of performance. They're all kind of the same screens. You know, the buttons all kind of feel the same. And it's just sort of new form factors. And that's really all they can do. So we'll see what happens in the next gen. I'm personally predicting either um, Android based handhelds in a whole generation where they put more powerful chips in them, maybe something from like a phone a couple years ago that's now cheaper, or something like that. It's a little bit more powerful, maybe you can handle Dreamcast and PSP a little bit better than the current ones. But in terms of performance, I'm not expecting anything really uh, groundbreaking for a long time. And the reason for that is that emulation itself is only so good. Um, there are certain systems like N64 that have very specific hardware that are difficult to emulate because the hardware is so specific to the point where even if you have like a really powerful gaming PC, the software itself just can't emulate it perfectly, or it just can't get the instructions right to actually just show the game as it's supposed to. So you get games that run at full speed and they're playable and they're, they run well, but there's graphical glitches. And I think we're gonna kind of hit a wall where that's what it's gonna be like. And then from that point on, performance is gonna be kind of the same in terms of handhelds, but you still might get some that have interesting features or again, interesting form factors or stuff like that. So. That's kind of what I'm expecting for the next gen. In the meantime, we're getting some weird stuff where like there's the uh, Ambernec 300X, which I did get one and we'll go over that. I wasn't planning on getting one, but uh, I did get one. And then uh, there's also the Powkitty Q20. And both of those devices take existing parts, or at least they seem to take existing parts from previous handhelds and put them in new shells. And then they're pitching them as new handhelds that are with the 300X at least, very overpriced. Um, I think, you know, if you're doing something like that, at least discount it a bit. The Q20 was pretty cheap, so I think that's a little bit better on Powkitty's part, but like, it's kind of weird that Anbernick has been putting out all these really great Emuelec handhelds over the last year, and then they put out one that's open Dingux again, and then they're charging a hundred bucks for it. And it's like, why? You know, that's, that's just bizarre. That makes no sense to me at all. Um, it's totally like a step backwards and the only thing I think is really good about the 300X is I'll take it over the WaveShare because the WaveShare has a very similar kind of uh, Famicom, uh, Game Boy Micro Famicom look to it, but the Anburnic one performs a little better and it's cheaper than that. So I would take it over the WaveShare and I actually did buy one to replace my WaveShare, which I'll be selling at some point, but that's the only thing I think is really good about it. And I think just for that price, I, I want more, you know? Like, give me something that performs better than that. Give me something that handles more systems, something better, you know, because really once you have like an Anburnic 350, that's a really hard open Dingux system to top. And I'm finally making that video. I have not made a video on the Anburnic 350, even though I talk about it all the time. Um, that's actually on deck for today. So I'll be recording that at some point. And finally, on the note of recordings in general, um, I'm not going to be recording for a little while. Like I'll, I'll record a bunch today. So I'll have some videos for foreseeable future. But then beyond that, I'm taking another little break just because again, there's something new coming out and I still have a bunch of old handhelds to go over, but I'm just going to take some time. I mean, it's the fall. There's stuff going on with work. Personally, I just got a mega SG from analog and I want to play the crap out of that. And I'm just going to use my free time a little bit different and not make as many videos as I have been. Um, which isn't to say, again, more videos aren't coming. Like, if I have a free day, I might make a whole bunch of them and then upload them one at a time. But, uh, you know, we'll go from there. We'll see what happens. So, thank you for listening. Again, always remember to charge your handhelds. And uh, I will see you next time.